Hi everyone, it's Vicky here. Today I'm going to create a double page art journal. It's one of my of the most requested videos, and um, I'm starting a new art journal for the new year. So let's fill it up together. For uh, starting today, I'm going to show you uh, how I find inspiration sometimes. So one of my greatest source of inspiration are big focal points. So for example, we can use die cuts or ephemeras to use as a focal point. And for today, I thought that this would make a great focal point for a page. It is a thick chipboard. However, I'm going to show you how you can make it flatter. And uh, there are other elements uh, from ephemeras that you can use as your, as your focal point, like this piano, for example. Maybe it is good for another page, probably for the first page I'm going to use that. So anyway, just look at what you have already. Find a big focal point that you like and let's create our page together. I'm going to uh, go through all the process step by step. So hopefully you can use anything that you have at hand. Now the focal point that I'm working with is a chipboard one, so it is quite thick. This is, by the way, from the Romance Forever collection, but uh, you can definitely use whatever you feel like using on your page. Now, uh, sometimes I work on my mini journals and I get a lot of comments about that. I absolutely love them because I use them as um, art exercise. So here you can see I did use a smaller size of this and I played with the images, the colors. I tried to do something that is um, pleasing to the eye. So from that, it is a start. I can move on and create a bigger project. So uh, definitely whatever I share on my mini journal, you can uh, expand it and make it bigger on your double sided pages. So anyway, this is a zipport. I need to make sure that it's not as thick because I'm planning to stick it inside my pages. So I'm just going to peel off the backing and use only the front. Now, as you can see, the front is kind of shiny. I'm going to show you how you can get rid of that later on. Now to start, I'm going to add some color on my background. I'm using two acrylic paints, a pale pink one and an ivory one, which I'm going to combine directly on top of my page. So I'm going to add a good amount on my glass mat. You can work directly on top of your glass mat. I just like to avoid um, as much uh, cleaning as possible. So I'm just using some uh, um, packaging there, which is uh, from my bin. And uh, then I'm going to use a big brush, which I'm going to dip in water and then pick up a little bit of that color. A big brush is going to cover your surface easily. And I'm dipping that into water because it's going to make the paint runny and I'm able to apply it easier. Now, without cleaning my brush, I'm going to move on to the ivory color and I'm going to fill in the gaps. I like to see the brush strokes. I like not to blend the colors completely. I like the darker and the lighter areas. So this is going to end up into a background that doesn't look flat at all. You can mix up even more colors. However, if you start only with two colors, you will find that this technique is really foolproof. You will always end up with a lovely background to start with. Don't pay too much attention on the brown strokes, on the lighter or the darker areas. This is really a background. We are going to do lots of things on top of it, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Now this is completely dry and I want to lighten it up somehow as well as add some interest, some visual texture in the background. So I'm using a spatula and I'm applying color. Again, I'm working with the same color that I used on the background and this is the ivory one. And I'm just going really randomly over the background, covering some areas here and there. I don't want the background to be very pinkish. Uh, I mainly want that to be ivory. That's why I'm doing that, to tone down the color that I already have there. I'm using a very big spatula, but you can go with a smaller one. Uh, don't overthink about this technique, just go ahead and do it without thinking at all. Trust me, at the end it's going to look nice as long as you use a color that you already have underneath. 
Now I do have all that paint on my palette, so let's do some splatters. For that I'm going to use a thin brush, dilute the acrylic paint with water and then do the splatters. Now I'm not going to thin down the acrylic paint too much. This is going to make sure that my splatters are going to be kind of dimensional and at the same time it creates kind of um, small lines. I don't know how to explain it, but the splatters are not defined like really small dots. I like this look sometimes, so that's what I'm going for. You can get these type of splatters with streaks only if you don't water down your acrylic paint too much. I'm going to move on to the pinkish color now and do the exact same thing. Again, didn't uh, thin it down too much with water. And you can go to town really, just add as many splatters as you like. It's uh, going to give some uh, good visual texture. At the same time, it's not making the ba your background looking super busy. Because again, I'm using the same colors that I have on the background. And here's a close-up look of how it looks at the moment. Now this is where you should take your focal point and place it on top of your page. If you find that your focal point doesn't stand out against the background, if the background is the same color or anything like that, then you can go ahead and add a very thin wash of a white color of, or ivory color on top of it. Very thin, dilute it with water and go over it lightly. This is going to tone down your background even more. I don't really need to do it because my focal point really stands out against this background, but I'm just showing you the technique to keep that in mind. Now at this stage it's uh, fun to bring in a stencil. You can either do stenciling with acrylic paint or you can use a paste over your stencil to add some dimension. I'm working with volume paste here and in white color. For today I'm going for a romantic look and feel, so I want to keep uh, my background quite uh, pastel looking and light looking. Just like always, down below in the description you will find a list of the exact products that I'm using. However, you can recreate something similar following the same steps by using whatever you have at hand. So you don't really need to have this exact stencil, you can use any text stencil that you have at hand. I absolutely love this one by the way because it has such a tiny text and um, I like that news uh, paper uh, look and feel. Anyway, I'm applying on both pages really randomly. I'm not creating rectangular squares. I'm not applying the stencil as it is all over the place. I'm just picking random areas to make it look organic. So now I'm going to leave that to dry and in the meantime I'm going to wash my spatula and my stencil. Now I'm super happy with how my background looking, really subtle, and it does have texture in real life, you will see the photos at the end. So now let's find some elements to dress up the focal point. I don't like to stick the focal point as it is, I'll try to find different elements to tuck behind to make it look more interesting. So again I'm using items from the same collection, the Romance Forever one. A clock is always nice for our journaling, I'm just uh, going to stick it behind that uh, car, so I'm going to separate it for now, and I think it looks just nice like that. And you see I'm just uh, going through the same pattern paper, trying to decide what uh, would uh, fit for a little cluster, but at the same time I'm uh, keeping in mind that I'm not going to add dimension. This is not a card, it's not a tag, it's not an album cover, I have to keep everything flat, which is a restriction when it goes to uh, a journaling, and it is the only restriction since we are working inside pages, but it is fun at the same time. So from this pattern paper I'm going to cut out some of those newspapers or those pages so that I can use them in one of my corners to dress it up a little bit. I'm going to do a lot of fuzzy cutting, uh, everything from the same pattern paper and I'm going to show it to you in a bit. Okay, so now I have all my elements ready to go. I will show them to you in a bit. For now I'm going to do some uh, ink blending. I will go with a coffee brown dye ink all the way to the edges. I'm just trying to create kind of a frame, a little bit uh, darker only at the edges. I'm not going to bring in too much of that brown into the page. And I will repeat the same process all around. 
and now it's time to put my composition together, all the little elements that I have fuzzy cut. For that, I decided to go with my rice paper glue. Now, this is for rice paper, but I find that it works just fine with um, sticking uh, paper down. Uh, you can use any type of uh, mixed media glue that you have. I like this one because it dries completely matte and it helps me get rid of shine on top of shiny elements. So in any case, I'm going to apply it. The back stick down the paper and I'm going to show you here what I do when the paper goes over the fold on the other side. So I'm just going to try and stick it there. It's not going to follow my instructions. So I'm going to show you what I do. I use a spatula and I create a fold so I know exactly where that line is and then I'm going to use my scissors and cut it out so that I can piece those uh, pieces together back on top of the page while at the same time it's not going to show that there is a gap. So this is the best way that I have found that um, over the years when you open and close the art journal it's not going to lift right there in the middle. By the way, over all the elements, I'm going on top of them with the rice paper glue just because I want to make sure that this is matte and at the same time it is going to allow me to use my big brush markers later on to do a little bit of shading. Now I do have that lace that I have cut out, again fuzzy cut from the same pattern paper, I'm going to stick it on top and again I will do that trick uh, using my scissors to cut out that little piece and stick it on the other page. Then I move on and uh, I'm going to place the clock again at the top. This is the one that I fuzzy cut in the beginning. On top of that, I'm going to stick that uh, car and I will embellish it with a couple of flowers, flower arrangements that I have fuzzy cut again from uh, the pattern paper. So I am gluing down the flower compositions now and I leave the car for the last since it's going to be at the top. Now once I stick the car on top I'm going to cover it again with the mixed media glue with this rice glue because it's going to turn it into looking matte and that's my trick of making sure that nothing is shiny on my page and they all have the same look and feel. And now let's embellish the other corner. I'm working on the two corners on a diagonal. And um, if you notice, I chose to go with colors that um, match each other. So I do have a little bit of green on the right with the leaves. So I chose to go with this piece of papers that has that green on top of it. I do have dark brown on the right. So I went with a little bit of dark brown here. And I'm just piecing one on top of the other and then also I'm going to bring in a little flower composition since I do have flowers on the other side. So the idea is to have something um, complementing that corner but at the same time to bring the same colors, the same designs on the other side. And again I'm covering everything that I stick down with the glue on top as well. Now my glue is all dry, it does look a little bit milky when you apply it, but it uh, does dry completely clear and matte. And I'm using my scissors to clean up the edges and to round up the corners. And now for one of my most favorite techniques of all times when it comes to art journaling, to add some shadows and um, to add some highlights as well as to enhance the colors of any image is to use my big brush markers. So the old ones uh, were this in one barrel, the new ones have a fine tip and a bigger nib. Uh, whatever you have you can use and um, especially with this technique it's really optional you don't really have to do it but trust me when you do this with your big brush markers it really brings everything to life. So I'm just touching the nib of my brush a little bit over those leaves and then smudging it with my finger. You can see how those leaves really come to life. I always like to use that with to do that with a slightly darker marker than the color that's underneath. And what allows me to do this technique is the fact that I did use rice paper or uh, any matte medium glue uh, underneath to make sure that the surface that you are working on is non-porous. 
the ink is going to dry completely permanent. However, it does allow you uh, for a few seconds to smudge it around so that you don't end up with uh, harsh lines and you add those soft shadows. This is a very relaxing process for me. I'm uh, wearing my headphones at the moment and I'm listening to music. Now that I'm doing the voiceover and the editing, it looks like I was uh, in a hurry, like I'm doing everything super quickly. But trust me, I was really relaxed, really enjoying the moment. However, now that I'm doing the video editing, I have to fast forward some steps so that you can see all the steps that I'm doing. But at the same time, the video doesn't end up being uh, one hour and a half. I will do this technique pretty much for every image that you see uh, on my page. However, I'm just going to let you see how I enhance the colors of the car because it is really the focal point. So you can see here I'm adding some shadows where I feel like it should be dark darker. And at the same time, by doing that, you can see how it pops against the background or the other elements that I have underneath and how it kind of brings it more to life. Another favorite technique of mine is to do some sketchy lines around the elements that I have uh, placed down. So I'm going around some of the images. I'm not trying to outline everything as it is. I'm just doing sketchy lines only here and there. This is going to help those images pop against the background again. And uh, by the way, I'm using a fine tip uh, marker. The, it is a 0 2 point nib and you can use any brown that you like. And of course, if you follow my art journal videos, by now you know what I'm going to bring next, my white gel pen and add some highlights. Again, sketchy lines, I'm not going to outline everything, just where I feel that it needs a little bit of highlighting on the leaves, on the flowers, the petals, pretty much everywhere, just a sketchy line here and there really makes a difference. I absolutely love this look, I feel like it is more whimsical, and um, it is uh, one of the techniques that I cannot go, go without on my projects. By the way, I'm using a jelly roll. I usually go with the number 10 jelly roll because it is quite thick. Uh, this one is a, um, an 8, I believe, because my 10 was uh, not working. Uh, trust me, it happens to me all the time as well. But I find that those jelly rolls are the most trustworthy uh, white gel pens in the market. And I'm going to bring in a text stamp with a very fine text and I'm going to do a little bit of stamping. I'm not going to stamp all over the place, mainly on the edges and mainly where there is already some um, uh, something going on. I don't want to overwhelm the um, background. As it is, I think that it is just fine. This little detail kind of brings everything together and I'm not really paying attention if I'm stamping upside down. Also, at some point, you can see I was uh, done using the acrylic uh, block. I prefer working with my fingers because I can uh, have more flexibility with the stamp and go over areas where it is kind of difficult to do on a book with the acrylic block. I'm also going to bring in one of the circle stamps from the stamp set. By the way, I'm working with my element stamp set, the one that I designed in my first collection. It's a favorite of mine and I use it every time when I create uh, art journal pages. Now, all that's left to do on this page is to add the quote. Now, for the quote, I decided to go with um, the best time to travel is now. And uh, I did fast forward this part because I did cut out uh, the alphabet using an alphabet die that I absolutely love and just put everything together on my page, just gluing letter by letter. You can definitely omit this completely and write down everything you like with your beautiful handwriting. You can definitely use an alphabet stamp if you like, or you can print out and cut out words to stick them down. So many different ways to do your quote. Here I'm just adding some finishing touches. I'm using my white gel pen to add some highlights on top of the letters. And then I will finish it off by adding my splatters. Now for the splatters, I'm using Liquitex acrylic ink. I'm going to dip in a very thin brush inside and just splatter all over the place. 
I want those white splatters to go over the black letters, over the cutout elements, everything. So uh, again, it is a little detail along with that black stamping that goes on all the elements and kind of brings everything together. Now also at some point I think I missed uh, filming the part where I did the border just with a thin uh, black marker. I added some sketchy lines all around, very simple thing. And that's it really. Here are some close-up photos on my art journal for today. I did add the list of supplies down below in the description just like always. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. If you did, don't forget to like the video and leave me a comment. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.